Mr. Plummer. Welcome back to another episode of Ask an Expert. Online lately, we've been getting a lot of questions about water pressure, what it means for your home, high and low water pressure, and how to check it. I'd like to go over a couple of those questions today, so step on back with me to my wet lab and we'll get going. Hey guys, welcome to the wet lab. Here we have a pressure regulator valve. So if you imagine in your house, this water line is coming in from maybe maybe your basement somewhere, coming in through the wall. You've got your main shutoff valve to your house, where if there's an emergency, obviously, you shut this valve off, the water stops, so you can call a plumber. Here we have a pressure regulator valve. So this is kind of the control center of your entire plumbing system in your house. This is gonna protect every single fixture in your house from water pressure. And you might ask, why do we need to be protected from water pressure? Well, the city has very high water pressure as it's coming in. It has a lot of water to give. A lot of people need that water. So it has to be high pressure to serve everybody. But when it comes into your house, that pressure needs to be toned down for very many reasons. Number one, your fixtures are all rated for residential water pressure. They can't handle the city pressure. If they have too much pressure, you'll notice they might start leaking, start failing, you might hear strange noises in the middle of the night, that kind of thing. So it's very important that you keep this pressure regulator valve well maintained and you keep it documented what the pressure is at. So coming through here, remember our, our pressure is being toned down in this valve right here. Let's imagine this is a hose bib outside your house, okay? This is a great place to check water pressure. One thing you want to remember, it's very important, when you go to check the pressure, don't do it on the hose bib on the front side of your house. Sometimes you can get a good reading, but a lot of the time that hose bib is not going to be regulated by this pressure regulator valve. So you, when you go to take your reading, you're going to get a city pressure reading as opposed to the pressure reading of your actual house. It'll give you a false positive, you'll end up worrying for nothing, so don't do that. Maybe try a back hose bib. I often like to go from a clothes washing machine. You can do it at the water heater as well. I'll go over that later. Um, there's, there's some things you want to be aware of if that's the route you choose to take, but really the back hose bib is likely going to be your best candidate. So to check your pressure, which is the first step in maintaining your plumbing system's health, is you're going to want to check that pressure. So we've got a pressure gauge here. I'm going to open up this valve and we can see the dial turn. Now this dial is showing almost 70 PSI. It's right about 67, 68. That's pounds per square inch and that's perfect. So your pressure needs to be between 40 and 80 PSI for that water to be safe for your home. It's absolutely critical. Otherwise you're going to start to get leaks, failures, all kinds of stuff down the line will start going bad if that pressure is not between 40 and 80. So get yourself a pressure gauge, maybe $10 from Home Depot, pop it onto that back hose bib and see what your pressure is. One thing I want to mention as well, signs of a PRV that's starting to fail. Let's say you take a pressure reading and you're within acceptable limits. You say, great. But maybe in tandem to that, you have discoloration in your water, maybe in a basement bathroom or a downstairs bathroom. Maybe it's coming out a little bit black, a little bit dark. That could be elements inside your pressure regulator valve failing. And there's bladders in here that regulate the amount of water, compress and contract it to adjust the pressure. And they're getting blasted by high pressure all the time. And when that rubber starts to break down, you might start getting a blackish colored water, probably in the lower fixtures in your house. So if you notice that discoloration in your water, definitely worth it to check your pressure regulator valve. Okay guys, now that we've looked at our pressure off of a hose bib, we've taken a look at what a PRV is, and we have a general understanding of why it's so critical for our home, I wanna show you another way you can check your water pressure and explain a couple things before we do that. So we've got this water heater here, You'll notice it's got this little bib down here at the bottom. you also notice it's plastic. Now, I don't recommend using a plastic bib because this plastic bib is just not, it's not it, guys. It's, it can create a lot of problems. If you turn it on, it might never turn off. They get gunked up real easy. So if you notice you have a plastic bib coming off the bottom of your water heater, I would pick a new spot to take your pressure. That being said, We've got this water heater right here. It's got a nice brass for us. So we're gonna pop our pressure gauge right on there, just like that. And we're gonna take a pressure reading. 
I've got a flathead screwdriver in my pocket all the time. Most of these are flatheads. Just give it a quarter turn. Yours might be multi-turn, that's okay. And we're gonna get a pressure reading and you'll notice it's right here at about 58, 57, and that's perfect, it's between 40 and 80. Now, this water heater is not firing. The burner is not firing. The pilot light's not even on. It, we use it for training so we don't leave them running all the time. But one thing you need to be aware of when you're attempting to take a pressure reading off a water heater is, is my burner firing? If your burner's firing, you're gonna have more pressure. That's due to thermal expansion. So if you ever have a plumber come in, he takes the reading off the water heater and he says it's too high, ask him to go take a reading at the back hose bib or maybe a closed washing machine and see if the pressure is the same. Another thing you need to look out for when you're taking a reading off a water heater you, you want to know the age of the water heater and how often it's been maintenance because sometimes you can get limestone build up at the bottom of the tank and it'll actually clog your pressure gauge and possibly cause it to malfunction permanently or give you a, a bad reading. Now while we're here on the subject of pressure and I mentioned thermal expansion, I did want to show you guys something. This is a thermal expansion tank. Now it's not plumbed into our system. What this does is it counters against thermal expansion. So as the water expands due to it getting hotter, it creates more pressure. Well, where does that pressure go in a closed system? Well, in the old days, before we added these expansion tanks, it would go find a fixture, the point of least resistance. Maybe it would be a, sh a leaky shower or a leaky sink, you know, that one that was always leaking when you were growing up. You could never figure out how to fix it. Well, that's probably because your home didn't have a, an expansion tank. So this fights against pressure fluctuations and it balances out. It gives that pressure somewhere to go. Um, I'm sure we'll talk about that in another section of Axe and Espert, um, but I just wanted to briefly go over that. Thank you for joining me in the wet lab. I hope you guys learned a little bit about water pressure, what it can mean for your home, and how to check it. As always, we are here at Mr. Plumber. If you don't feel comfortable doing any of this stuff, you want a second opinion, or you just want one of our certified plumbers to come in and take a look. Join us next time and have a great day.